right here. So I can't prove this, but if you clicked on this video, there's a very significant chance that you are a guitar player or at the very least are a guitar fan and you want to know what the most iconic guitar intros are and why. I think we can all agree that there are certain songs that have inspired people to pick up the guitar for generations and generations. And when you hear them, you know exactly what song it is. Like this one, for example. <laughs> So that was Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, and a lot of people might know this intro from Back to the Future. Some of you might just know it because you're a huge classic rock fan. This intro solo is so iconic that even when people take licks from this and use it in their own music, everyone is still thinking about Johnny Be Good. Another reason why so many guitar players love to play it beyond the iconic status is because it's a masterclass in seamlessly integrating major and minor pentatonic sounds. Because the song, like a lot of early rock and roll songs, is set in a blues context and we're playing a blues in B flat. So immediately you might be thinking, well, B flat minor pentatonic would definitely work. But it just so happens that B flat major pentatonic also works. And in case you didn't know, you can always find your major pentatonic scale three frets down from the root of your minor pentatonic scale. So here was the root of B flat minor pentatonic. So we'll just move down one, two, three frets and play G minor pentatonic, which is actually the same as B flat major pentatonic. And what you should notice, where those major pentatonic notes encroach on our minor pentatonic box. So, when we're playing minor pentatonic, we can add this major pentatonic note right here, and here, and here. So, we can see right off the bat, Johnny B. Good actually starts on a major pentatonic note. And then here's another major pentatonic note. Minor, major, minor. And this is us starting on the major third, which is a note that does not belong in minor pentatonic. So this is a really easy way to quickly veer off into major pentatonic and then come back to minor pentatonic. And here again we have minor, major, and then this iconic double stop lick here. Again, moving between major and minor. This comes from major. And then we fully slide into our major pentatonic box at this point. So possibly the most iconic part of this intro such a classic rock lick and everyone from Angus Young of ACDC to Chuck Berry to guitar players in 2020 still loves that classic rock lick and my favorite lick that right there that really tasteful lick, where again, venturing into major pentatonic for a second, and then coming back to minor. Major. And again, landing on the root note of our minor pentatonic. Such an iconic intro and so worth learning because it can add a lot of sophistication to your playing to understand where these licks are coming from.
So that was The Thrill Is Gone by the unbelievable guitar master B.B. King. And the reason this intro is so iconic is because we're taking a scale that we know and love, the B minor pentatonic scale. But B.B. King plays even the most simple licks with so much feeling. And that is one of the staples of his playing and what about his playing that people have been trying to emulate for generations. And the beauty of this intro solo is that it is so simple and he uses some techniques that are so worth working on as a guitar player. Vibrato, attention to phrasing, dynamics. And if you incorporate this into your playing, it can take a 10 out of 10 guitar solo to an 1,000 out of 10. Those are real numbers that I calculated. We start with a really simple lick. That was me playing with no feeling those three important facets to your playing. I don't know about you, but I thought that that second version sounded substantially better. And again, it's all about feeling. That's one of the parts of music that you can't necessarily teach. You just have to be attentive to what the emotion of a piece of music is and how you can best express that. And one last thing I want to leave off with that a lot of people have been replicating or trying to replicate for generations since B.B. King, in addition to the emotion, is a very cool little trick where instead of simply playing three notes or four notes, you can bend like that. And it kind of emulates a human voice even more when you approach it that way. And I think that's part of what made B.B. King so incredible. It's like he was telling a story with a human voice through the instrument. And that is what separates him from so many other guitar players. So let me show you that again, you know, paying attention to how much I can make it sound like a human voice. So it's all about feel. It's always all about feel with B.B. King. And now, let's take a look at the next intro. That was Soul Shine by the Almond Brothers. I love that intro so much. It just hits you in the face right away with beauty. It hits you with beauty. And we're using a lot of major pentatonic throughout this on the whole. We're in B flat major. And so we start with our B flat major pentatonic shape. Just a really tasty bend in there. And then for a brief moment, we're actually following the chord changes of the song. And while we start on a B flat major, we then go to an F major, and you can actually hear the guitar following uh, an F mixolydian kind of sound. And that's a really common Allman Brothers move. Something that a band like the Grateful Dead, Jerry Garcia, you would also employ that a lot. It's a classic jam band kind of sound. And then we're back to major pentatonic again. And then we do that kind of Chuck Berry thing again, where we start on, you know, a minor pentatonic note, and then slide up to major pentatonic. I think what makes this intro the most iconic is the way we take an incredible opening line and it repeats just up the octave. So it's almost like the intensity and the emotion of it increases because we started with... The second part of the intro starts with the same thing. And now we're just up here, actually in the B.B. King box. This is a position he would often play in as well. 
Uh, and again, we're in B flat major. So like I was saying at the beginning of the video, if you can find your B flat minor pentatonic, move down three frets, use the same shape. And now you have your major pentatonic. And there's an outside note, but that belongs to the major scale. So it's kind of a harmless addition to major pentatonic that you can always throw in. The best part of this intro, in my opinion, is the very last lick. So much emotion. And this is actually utilizing a pretty common blues trick where you, over a major chord, because at this point we're over an A flat major chord, instead of using an A flat major scale, we're going to use an A flat minor pentatonic lick. And then we resolve it back to our home, home base back in B flat. Just a beautiful intro to a beautiful song. And Warren Haynes it did a gorgeous job with coming up with a motif that repeats. And it's so good that you want to hear it again. And he satisfies that for the listener. And he plays exactly what you want him to play, in a, in a sense. It's like where your ear wants him to go, he goes there. And that's why it's so satisfying to listen to this song. And it's just beautiful. Black Magic Woman by Santana, one of the most incredible covers ever. A lot of people think it's his song, because of course his version of it is so iconic. Though of course we must give credit to Fleetwood Mac, early Fleetwood Mac, Peter Green, who wrote this incredible blues song that Santana took and added a lot of Latin flavor to. And you can hear that in his choice of groove throughout the song. And of course, in his choice of notes as well, because right off the bat, we start with this beautiful D minor pentatonic lick. Here, we actually move outside of the minor pentatonic shape and we play what is considered the nine, or in other words, the second, which is not a note usually in the pentatonic scale, but you can almost always, if not completely always, add it whenever you're playing minor pentatonic. It adds so much flavor and it's beautiful. And he plays this again. He plays it again up the octave. So that's another place where you can add this note. So I want to play my very favorite lick of the solo, which is when the chord progression goes to a G minor seven chord because this is a minor blues in D minor. So at a certain point, we move up to our four chord, which is, like I said, G minor seventh. And what he plays is this, which is just such a beautiful way to outline that chord because you're breaking out of minor pentatonic and you are accenting this chord change. And you're playing you know, D minor, you add the sixth, you add the flat seven, and this is a beautiful lick to use any time you're playing a minor seven chord. That's playing around with the same notes. So worth looking into that lick. I love it. The very last thing to pay attention to is the last lick of the solo. He ends up playing this really tasty lick that kind of brings you through the blues scale. And the only difference between minor pentatonic and the blues scale is that blue note that you add. They call it the blue note or the sharp four. And you can add that anytime you are playing minor pentatonic. It's a great lick to throw in there. And I think it exemplifies the way that Santana is taking flavors of blues and early rock and combining that with Latin flavor and creating something totally unlike what a lot of people had heard at that time and something that is 
still so influential generations later. So I think the thread that feeds through all of these iconic intros is all of these beautiful note choices that sort of reveal the influences of these players and are what players who are inspired by Santana and B.B. King and Warren Haynes and you know, all the Almond Brothers guys and Chuck Berry uh, have tried to emulate for generations since then. But most of all, I hope you can see that it's really about how they played these intros. It was the feeling and the soul and wanting to create something simple enough that anyone, anywhere, could hear these intros and feel moved by them, could feel like they wanted to play along or sing along. And I think that's what makes an iconic piece of music. It's something that is for people, that reaches people, and is filled with perfectly placed melodic statements, like Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good is a string of licks in a row that are all so iconic that you could play just one of them, and anyone anywhere could recognize that intro. These are some of my favorites. Please comment down below what your personal favorites are, because I would love to know, and I think others out there would love to know. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. Have a beautiful day. I hope you listen to some music, too.